Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. I have a fun project featuring Simon Says Stamp stencil set called Village. Create this mixed media feel. I'll be working with a gel printing plate as I do my stenciling. These cards come together surprisingly quickly. To complete this project, you'll need a gel printing plate and a brayer. I have links in the description of this video. Simon Says Stamps Village is a five-piece stencil set and also comes with a mask for the rooftops. I'm going to be working with Simon's positively saturated inks and I have them laid out in the order in which they're going to be applied. My first color, Cadet, is a medium blue and I'm applying it all over the gel plate with a brayer. To create some texture in the sky, I'll be applying clean water with a fan brush to the top of the gel plate. I'm working with a panel of Bristol Smooth cardstock that is five and a half inches by five and a half inches. Bristol Smooth can tolerate some moisture without peeling. Give the panel a good rub and then peel it off the gel plate. I took some time to make sure that all the stencils would line up so that there wasn't a stencil in there that was facing in the wrong direction. Use my finger and my thumb on the corner of the gel plate so that I can line the stencil up to that left hand bottom corner. It is important that the subsequent stencils are lined up in the exact same way. I'm using my brayer to apply blush as I roll the ink on in the area that is cut out, I apply a bit more pressure. Then the stencil is removed from the gel plate. The panel is laid face down, lining it up the very same way that I lined up the stencil. And I give it a good rub and then peel it up off the gel plate. I have a wet one off the side and between colors I roll the brayer on it. I'm not worried about removing all of the ink but it will take care of a lot of it. So now stencil two and again I use my finger and thumb to help guide the placement of the stencil on the left hand bottom corner of the gel plate. This time I'll be applying a bold color called Taffy. As I roll the ink with my brayer onto the stencil, I apply a bit more pressure in the cutout areas. The stencil is peeled up and then I can take my panel, line it up in that bottom left hand corner, lay it down, give it a good rub and then peel it up and you can start to see this village coming together. The third stencil is lined up in that bottom left hand corner and I'm going to be applying a vivid blue called Ocean. The ink is picked up with the brayer and then rolled onto the stencil. Again, a bit more pressure in those areas that are cut out. Sometimes it can be difficult to see if you're getting good coverage with your ink, especially with lighter colors. What I do is pick up one corner of the stencil and you can definitely see the difference between where the ink is applied and not. And once again, I use my finger and thumb to help line up my panel in that bottom left hand corner, give it a rub and there we go, it's getting close. For the fourth stencil, I'm going to be applying a deep blue called Galaxy. The stencil is lined up and as I roll on the ink, it looks so dark, but everything is softened when you use a gel plate. There's still one more stencil after this one, but this stencil will complete the houses. And I peel it off the gel plate Take my panel, line it up in that bottom left hand corner and give it a good rub. This stencil set is so much fun to work with and there you can see the completed village. The final stencil will be lined up directly onto the panel and it is easy to see if the windows are corresponding with each of the houses. And I'll just use some tape to hold either side of the stencil in place. I'm going to be applying some mica powder, Lindsay's Magicals Banff Blue, which is actually a gold, to the windows. 
Just a little bit of water is added to my work surface and then I'll add the mica powder fairly thickly to it. And then I'll just apply the mica paint to the window openings. I did get a little bit of seepage on some of the windows, which I was kind of surprised because when I did my first panel and I did use a different softer gold, I didn't get any whatsoever. But it's a mixed media project and so it is certainly not about perfection. And when I lift my stencil up in those couple of areas where the paint has seeped, I take a corner of a paper towel and pick up some of that moisture. I give the panel a few minutes to dry and then I trim it down so that it measures four inches by five and a quarter inches. The first panel that I completed was done with Distress Oxide inks. I've got them lined up side by side so that I can add some white snowy spatter. To maintain a nice bright white on these water soluble inks, I like to use Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. It's quite a thick medium and I do add just a little bit of water to loosen it up. This is when I decided there wasn't quite enough contrast between the houses and the sky. So I'm going to be using the mask that accompanies the stencil set. I'm going to be applying a deep blue called Royal with a blending brush. I'm using a fair amount of pressure so I get a good intensity of color. Texture that was created when water was added to the gel plate for the first pressing of the Bristol Smooth cardstock is still going to show through. And I didn't have my mask lined up quite right, so I'm just going to smidge it over and add in some additional color. I did lose my white spatter, but I'll fix that up later. A glue pen is being used to add some fine details to the moon. When the pen is depressed, it leaves just a little droplet of glue, and then I'll sprinkle some gold glitter onto it. And now that I can see what I'm doing, I'll add in a few more droplets of glue to round out the accent. I have a simple and bold die cut sentiment for these cards. I'm using Simon's piece. For this card, it has been die cut from matte gold cardstock. For the other card, it will be cut from deep blue glitter cardstock, and then they will be mounted on foam die cuts. The panel is adhered to an A2 size top folding black card base. The foam back sentiment is adhered in the bottom third of the panel. And back to the other card, I'm going in with some more Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White and adding some spatter to the nighttime sky. The panel was left to dry for about 10 minutes. I'm going to create some greater definition with those windows. This glue pen can create a very thin line of glue. I'm adding it along the right hand side and the bottom of each window. I'll do several windows at once and then coat them with black glitter. It's just enough to help add some definition back to those windows, especially the ones where the paint seeped. And for a touch of sparkle in the sky, I'm going to add in some glue dots and I'll cover that with white embossing powder. And I'll give several minutes for the panel to dry and then I can take a paintbrush and brush off the excess glitter. And like the previous card, it is mounted on an A2 size black card base and the foam back sentiment adhered to it. And that completes this fun project, stenciling with a gel printing plate featuring Simon Says Stamps Village Stencil Set. If you haven't worked with a gel plate, this is definitely something that you want to check out. Not only is it great for stenciling, it also creates beautiful backgrounds. Thank you so much for stopping by, and as always, I appreciate your visit.